There we go. Oh, good morning. There we, there's the recording button popped up. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody, to the Saturday Morning Mastermind. I'm your host, Samantha Studebaker Carl, and I'm here with all my good friends, uh, Dan and Jason, Catherine, Chris, and Karen. And today we are going to continue our discussion of Chapter 15 of The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. And Chapter 15 talks about uh, seven really powerful habits that you can develop in yourself to help you achieve more in your life. So, uh, but before we get going on that, um, oh, wait, no, we're on part two. Did I say that? We're on part two of the discussion. And last time we discussed the first three uh, habits, and today we're going to we discuss four through seven. Okay. So then, oh. If you guys are watching this as a recording, then there's links below the video where you can connect with us on our Facebook group if you'd like to participate too. Uh, so, okay, everybody go ahead and introduce themselves and then we will go ahead and jump into this discussion. Hey, good morning, it's Jason Roberts here. Glad to be here. Glad to see everybody here at the Saturday Morning Mastermind. And uh, let's do this thing. Morning, right. everyone. Oh, go ahead, Chris. No, you go, Dan. Okay. Um, morning, everybody. I'm Dan Sissick. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, just looking forward to hearing what we have to talk about. Excuse me. Sorry. My name is Chris from Chicago. Really happy to be here and see your uh, faces today. Thanks. Good morning, this is Catherine Clement in Boulder, Colorado. Looking forward to uh, finishing up this chapter and maybe even throwing around some ideas. We need to pick a new book because we only have like three chapters left in this one. So we'll see where the conversation goes today. I forgot where we, did we get through four of them or I forgot how far we got. <laughs> um, hopefully Karen's back in from checking on the puppies. She may not be. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe she's still checking on them. Or if they, if it is really cold, then she might be bringing them in. So, okay. So in this chapter, we have we cover seven different habits. Last time we talked about the first three, and I'm just gonna go ahead and read read through uh, the end of the chapter where it talks about all of the seven habits, and then we can get into this discussion of each one. <clears throat> okay, so. Seven powerful slight edge habits. Number one, show up. Be the frog who jumps off the lily pad. Number two, show up consistently. Keep showing up when others fade out. Number three, cultivate a positive outlook. See the glass as overflowing. Number four, be committed for the long haul. Remember the 10,000 hour rule. Number five, cultivate a burning desire backed by faith, not hoping or wishing, but knowing. Number six, be willing to pay the price. Sometimes you have to quit the softball team. And number seven, practice slight edge integrity. Do the things you've committed to doing even when no one else is watching. Okay, so let's see. Let me get into my chapter here for the fourth habit. Let's see. Get to the right page. Okay, so habit number four, be committed for the long haul. In the beginning of this little section, it says showing up is essential, showing up consistently is powerful, showing up consistently with a positive outlook is even more powerful, but doing all of that for just a week is just doing it for a week. And then he talks about the, um, you know, he kind of refers to those weight loss workout programs that change you you know, that promise to change your life in 90 days. And, um, and he's like, but there's a problem with the 90 day program. It doesn't give you enough, uh, up, give you enough time to build up a new belief in yourself so that you can commit or continue after the 90 days. But he says it wouldn't be a very popular marketing campaign, but here's the truth. You don't need a 90 day program. You need a 250 day program. 
that's 365 days with 115 off just to allow for the human factor. <laughs> so he's basically sitting here telling us that, um, you know, those, uh, you know, you've got to be committed for the long haul because that's where you really see the results. And that's kind of the whole uh, premise of this book is that it's not the, the big things that you do every once in a while, it's those little things that you do over the long period of time that get you the results that you're looking at. So um, uh, what do you guys think about this, this little section on being committed for the long haul? Yeah, totally true. Consistency is what brings you results in something. Um, and then on the, on the other hand, like, so, so like you don't want to give up when you get close to something. And like, from what I was, what I was hearing, you were saying like, okay, it's kind of like the same thing as uh, three feet for gold where you get close to something and you're making the effort, but you're not quite there because you don't put enough effort there. And so, yeah, I think it's totally important to be consistent and for long periods. Something that came up for me though, as you were saying that was that, and, and some of us have had this experience, most of us probably have, is that you don't always pick the path that you necessarily want to continue on forever on. And so sometimes, uh, you know, you make choices and that's, um, you know, so it's hard when you're getting close to success at something, but then sometimes a situation is a, uh, a, 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 a still hold or stagnant where you can't change the situation and you need to move on or some situation is not in your best interest to, to keep on with. So you kind of like, my thought is like, you kind of need to know when to go another direction or do something else and when to continue on. So that was just something coming up in my head with what you just read. And that's a good point, Chris, especially if we're talking about like a workout program, you know, let's say we decide that we're going to start working out and we want to get our whole body in good shape, but we decide we're just going to do sit-ups, you know, <laughs> you can do sit-ups forever and that's not going to get your whole body in shape, is it? It's just going to get your stomach in shape. So sometimes you might have to do something different to, uh, to reach your total goal. If your only goal was to have a six pack stomach, then maybe a thousand sit-ups you know, or continuing in sit-ups forever would make sense. <clears throat> Sandy! There's Sandy. Awesome. Jump out, guys. Who else wants to talk? <clears throat> I just want to uh, quick, uh, quickly say something about what Chris said there. Um, I can totally see where that you know, comes into play sometimes. Um, and in regards to exercise, um, an example I experienced was um, when I was studying martial arts, um, I was I was doing really well with it, but then, and it was, you know, of course, giving, you know, uh, a great workout and stuff, but my instructor was so intense that um, when we did grappling and after, you know, these long uh, sessions, a lot of times you end up getting hurt. And so you spend more time being hurt than you are, <laughs> than you're actually, you know, um, uh, growing physically. And, um, <clears throat> And so in that, in that sort of case, my goal, I had to re, um, refocus on what it was that I wanted, um, which was really to be healthier and stronger. And, and uh, I had learned a lot with what I was doing there. But after breaking a couple ribs and being down for a while and then having to come back and it was all, it was actually causing inconsistency in, in my training. And since my focus, since I realized my focus wasn't to go to the Olympics for martial arts or become some amazing martial artist <clears throat> and, and teach martial arts or something down the road, it was really to stay in shape and, and to learn some new techniques and, um, <clears throat> and really just to maintain, I had to realize that it wasn't, that wasn't the right path for me. 
you know, so I started doing lower, um, lower impact stuff that allowed me to be more consistent with my goal. <clears throat> and I actually, I had to actually uh, give up the, uh, the martial arts because I just realized it was more of a detriment for me than, than uh, it, it should be. And, and that was difficult for me, but sometimes you do have to make those different tacks and in your uh, path so that you can uh, stay consistent and, and move forward. So anyway. <laughs> yeah. Hey Jason, was that the Cobra Kai school? It sounds like the Cobra Kai school. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but it was intense training and uh, they taught you to be not just the roots or the branches of the tree, but the whole tree. And uh, there was all these metaphorical things and, but it was grappling and uh, jujitsu and uh, taekwondo and karate and everything rolled into one. And, um, you know, there was uh, definitely people there that were training to be in tournaments and, and whatnot, but uh, I, uh, that's not what, what I was trying to do. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So be, you know, um, there's a lot of ways, I think like what Chris was saying, there's a lot of ways to get to the path that you choose. And sometimes, we may be, it may be, you know, seem like we're on the right path, but suddenly it shifts to where it may be t eventually taking you to the right destination, but it's going, it's going in the wrong direction in the meantime. And if we can realize that and then maybe just hop over to a different path, but still focused in the right direction, you know, maintaining that focus is important, I think. So I'd love to hear what everybody else has to say. <laughs> I'll just hop out real quick. I hopped on real quick. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I'm driving and I'm going to a movement class to do all this stuff like capoeira and bars and rings and gymnastics and all this stuff. But uh, I need to get the gist of the conversation. So I'll sit here for a minute, but I'll, I'll be on about 20 minutes or more. So good to see you all. I miss you. <laughs> I wanted to come on and be with you for a little bit while I can. I'll jump out. Um, with thinking about some of what you were saying about it's the it is it's those little constant everyday things that you do that also become a part of your routine and who you are and what you're about, and it makes it easier to keep moving forward. Um, with slight adjustments, like Jason said, that you know you might have to adjust because of things you realize about how it impacts you but you don't let it stop you you don't let it you know keep you like chris said three feet from gold um i think that's what a lot of people do is especially like with new year's resolutions and stuff they get all gung-ho and hyped up about it but the minute it becomes a little bit harder and they've lost that initial enthusiasm you know it's it's getting past that enthusiasm part of it and, you know, realizing it's like the day-to-day -day trench, you know, it's like when you get up every day and you go to work and go to a job that you are not the craziest about or whatever, but yet you do it because it is the means to an end, but kind of that's, you know, kind of how being in the everyday of the little slight edge things, you know, those are what will get you to those dreams, but you can't lose sight of that dream either. And you have to keep holding on and keep pushing forward to, you know, attain that. And that's, um, I think, part of the training in essence that you get that so that way you ultimately get there, you get the ultimate reward from that. I think this is probably the hardest thing for most people. Um, there are definitely personalities that tend to do better with long-term commitments, but mine is not one of those. <laughs> and um, which is why I'm divorced three times and I've had about 80 lives in this lifetime doing so many different things. 
but um well i did stick with nursing for 20 years i guess that's that's pretty good but um I, I worked in different areas of nursing. Like I, my, I need to be challenged. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's difficult to stick to one project for a long time for me. Now, having said that, there are actions that I take daily that help me do all those things like so I'm sticking to that plan for the long term like the daily actions things so I guess it just depends on um, what you know what level you look at it. I think exercise was a great great example I don't know if any of you saw my post I did on Facebook this week I'm doing one plank a day and um, it was really difficult for me to I can relate Jason because with spinal cord damage uh, every time I try to exercise I mean it just takes one wrong move and I can be injured for months or years and so and I've done that <laughs> like I've, I've gotten better and then I push a little too far and then I'm like down you know for however long so I have to be I had to put a lot of thought into what exercise can I do consistently that will not harm me and I finally came and I especially needed uh, core strength so I came to the conclusion that planks was the way to go and um, welcome Michael and so but i had like when i started i could only hold the plank for like seven seconds you know it was so pitiful like i just busted out laughing and um i uh but i said well you know i'm just gonna do it i'm gonna do it every day no matter what and i've even like gotten into bed and guys i've i've put in this is like 96 hours this week and i have another 12 to do tomorrow so you know, it, it's it's been a challenging week, and and it would be easy for me to say, even though it's only like now I'm up to 45 seconds. But see, that's the beautiful thing about planks, because it's hard. It's it's almost impossible for even me, even working that many hours in a week, to tell myself I don't have 45 seconds to uh, do something, you know, to help myself. So it's hard, like it's easy to, easier to keep myself in check for that one plank a day. And I'll move it up to two and three or whatever, you know, but um, for right now, that's working. And I plan to continue that. But exercise is one of those things, you know, that's why I love the 45 seconds because <laughs> it's not like I'm committing to a two hour workout or something or going and doing gymnastics like the beautiful Sandy Root over there but uh or or doing the yoga for hours or whatever like i i pretty much have about 45 seconds to exercise in a day so it's working out pretty good <laughs> yeah i want to say like that's amazing you know even you were putting yourself down for doing seven seconds and that's amazing you know a lot, plank is hard <laughs> plank is really hard and for you to commit to that i mean that's amazing you know so if you're giving you props for the starting <laughs> the seven seconds there that's great i was rolling on the floor i'm like i'm gonna do a plank and then i was like seven seconds i'm like oh my god oh, <laughs> that's amazing. The <laughs> seven seconds is amazing i mean for me even uh, being fit plank is hard so yeah you're you're doing awesome <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> i wanted to talk about a little bit of the other part of this section where um you know he's referring to that long period of time he talks about um in malcolm gladwell's book outliers he traces the actual amount of time that goes into the eventual overnight success, um, such as the Beatles or Bill Gates and 
and he documents what he calls the 10,000 hour rule. The key to outrageous success in any endeavor is to put in about 10,000 hours of practice. 10,000. <laughs> and he says, if you put in eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year for about five years, that's 10,000 hours. And um, he says, uh, no matter what you're trying to accomplish, you need to ask yourself, am I willing to put in 10,000 hours or more to get what I want? And, um, you know, and that kind of reminds me of, or not reminds me, but it kind of put what it puts in mind is when you're trying to learn a new skill. And, um, you know, it's like, I don't, I mentioned one of, in the, one of the previous sessions that I was working on getting my A plus certification for computer tech. And the book that I'm studying is like this big, I mean, it's huge. And so it's, it's a lot of information. And if I look at that and go, oh my God, how am I ever going to learn all this information? And, and it's overwhelming. Um, it, it's a lot. And but then I, I think back on things that I've learned in the past where, you know, when I first learned how to be a pet groomer, I was, you know, flimsy with my hands. I didn't know how to hold the scissors. I was having trouble holding the pet and holding the, the nail clippers and all these different little things. And, but then after doing it for a few years, it was like no big deal, you know, as an expert at it. And, um, you know, and that has, that's happened in a number of different things. When I learned how to drive a semi truck, you know, at first I'm like freaking out because it's so hard. It's so difficult. Like anytime you learn some brand new skill, it's, um, it seems overwhelming, but then after some time goes by of you doing it every day, you, all of a sudden it becomes old hat, it becomes a habit and it's easy. And you know, when I was teaching my kids how to drive a car, it, it was, it was kind of like that, you know, when they were first driving, they were way over correcting, they were hitting the brake too hard, they were hitting the gas too hard. And, you know, it takes that long period of time to develop a new skill so that it becomes easy. And so that it becomes, you know, second nature, if you will, to be able to do that thing and have it be, have you be really, really good at it. And I think we forget that sometimes when we're trying to learn something new and we get overwhelmed with the amount of whatever it is, all the information or the, the, the stuff that we have to know or try or physically have to do in order to become an expert at something or even just to become, you know, knowledgeable about something. Um, so I think when we, we, I, this book has helped me out a lot in a lot of different ways as far as thinking in terms of uh, long-term goals and trying not to get overwhelmed by, by really big tasks. So, and just being reminded of this like 10,000 hour rule, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when I was younger, I used to see people that were like really good at playing musical instruments. And I thought, oh, I would love to do that, you know, but then I'd go to like piano lessons or guitar lessons and, and I'd be sitting there barely even able to, to get one little tiny little tune and, and it would be really frustrating and I would give up, you know. But I didn't realize that those people who were really, really good at that had spent like 10,000 hours learning how to do it or becoming an expert at that. So um, it's just, uh, in some ways, it seems overwhelming to think that you have to put in so much time to learn something. But yet at the same time, I think it's a comfort also knowing that I'm still just at the beginning of this new thing I'm trying to learn. And it's okay for me to uh, only know a little bit at a time or learn or, or experience a tiny bit at a time and just be doing it consistently knowing that if I just keep doing it, it'll be accomplished. <clears throat> There's another aspect of time that I would like to mention or bring up. <clears throat> and that is um, being at the end of life. <laughs> Who knows how close to the end. Um, there's still something, <clears throat> excuse me, there's still something that I'm attempting to accomplish in my life. And it feels like I have kept coming back around and back around, um, you know, oh, at least every, every decade um, working 
on it and it's like you know give it up already in fact i can see lots of people around me who probably had similar goals and and seem to maybe have actually given up and i think often back on my <clears throat> on my second pregnancy by the time i was pregnant for the second time i realized that uh, there were things going on with my body that I really didn't have control over. You know, <laughs> they were going to happen no matter what what I said, did, you know, what whatever. And by that time, <clears throat> excuse me, man, I don't know what's going on with my throat. Um, By that time, I was um, acting as a Tupperware manager trying to get my first husband through law school. And there was no option to quit. There was no option to not do it. But I also knew that, that I only had so much energy and I knew that I would have to take a break in the day, sometimes a couple breaks in the day and nap. And, you know, there was no option about that either. And and I knew there were some other things, you know, that, that just wouldn't be the same. And, and that has amazingly uh, been a, a touchstone for me because I was able to keep going anyway. I managed to go ahead and have a baby. I managed to go ahead and, and remain a Tupperware manager. And that was, you know, and being in charge of several people and being available a lot and working. Um, into the night, driving sometimes a couple hours at night, and um, there were just many aspects of it that I that I look at and I think I did those things, and so uh, you know it, it really doesn't matter that I'm aged, <laughs> except for the people who have to look at me, <laughs> but um, I. You know, I can keep coming around. I can keep getting up from my naps and I can keep getting up from what feels like a, quite the blow, you know, that I really wasn't anticipating. I thought I was, um, thought I was, you know, better prepared to handle that or whatever. And I can keep going. And uh, I think that's part of uh, hanging in for the long haul. I'll end with that. You bring up a great point, Karen, and that's adaptation. You know, sometimes conditions change and we have to adapt the way that we do things instead of giving up, which was sort of part of the whole plague story too. But, you know, as we age or, or if, you know, we get in an accident or whatever, like so many people just completely give up everything. I mean, sometimes you have to while your body's healing or whatnot but then they never go back to it you know they just like give up on it for life and so i love that you brought out that just because conditions change doesn't mean that we have to just not do things or give up on our dreams or whatever uh, as a matter of fact i think we just get wiser the older we get learn how to do it better that's that's just the way it is <laughs> Yeah, well, we hope so, right? We hope we get a little wiser. Um, I, th I think that's why it's really important to take the time to to dig down into your goals and uh, figure out what it is you really want, so that you know what are the how to prioritize those things. Like, what is what is it my ultimate goal down the road, way down the road? Where do I want to be? And then, what are the smaller goals? and how important are they? And that way you can recognize, you know, if you're on the path to a really important uh, goal down the road, that even though it's important, you know that you can, you can put it aside for the time being if you need to, because ultimately, you know, your path's going to take you there. Um, and also for the smaller goals, you know that 
you don't have to hold on to those smaller goals because they're maybe not that really that important. Maybe it's something you'd like to do, dabble in it, but if you have to let it go, you can let it go. Um, so really digging down into what is it that you want um, <clears throat> and why it is that you want it and what about it, what about it are the things that you, you, you want, you know, um, like, like say if you, I mean, well, it's hard to give an example, but um, what you, I, I guess what, what I'm saying is what you think you want can sometimes not be really truly the essence of what you want. And so by digging down to, to see, well, what is it that I want about this thing? It's like if, if <clears throat> you're wanting to buy a new car, it's like, well, why is it that you want to buy the new car? And is it, is it really, is it status or is it that you really need a, a car? Or is it that you just like this particular model car and suddenly you really want to have it? Um, you know, ultimately down the road, is it that you have to have this particular car or down the road, it something, are you open to something else, maybe even better, but it's still a vehicle. So um, I think that it can help to, to dig into what it is that we're actually trying to get sometimes to figure out, you know, am I trying to force something here? Am I trying to force to get this particular type of vehicle? But really what I want is um, an essence of just having a a good car down the road. <laughs> Again, that's, it's difficult to make an example, but I don't know, hopefully you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I think that's a great point uh, to, to J Jason, and it kind of leads us into the next habit, but I just saw Karen unmute herself. So uh, Karen, jump out there and share what you wanted to talk about. Well, <clears throat> thank you. The first part of what Jason said made me think of uh, something that happened last night. My sister likes for me to ask her questions. And um, so I asked her a question last night. Why is it that we so often in life do so many things we don't want to do and so few of the things that we do want to do? And she said, commitment. And I thought, ouch. <laughs> So I said, well, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be a good idea to think about some of the things that you'd like to do? I mean, she's only, I think she's three and a half years younger than I am, so poor <laughs> up towards the, the upper end. And uh, I said, wouldn't it be a good idea to think about some of the things that you've always wanted to do in life and make some commitments to yourself? to do some of those things that you like. Because I think a lot of us get stuck in the idea that we have to kind of drudge along uh, doing things, do, doing different things. And when we look around us, sometimes they're all things we don't like that much. And <clears throat> no one else is going to force us to do something that we really like to do, or generally they will. <coughs> anyway, I thought that was a worthy consideration. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, Karen, you know, because I think that sometimes when we think, you know, we say, okay, you know, I would really like this thing, or I want to do this, this thing, I want to try or do or experience or whatever is somehow or another, we talk ourselves out of it by saying, you know, I don't have enough time, or I don't have enough uh, money, or I don't have enough energy or whatever that excuse is that we, you know, that we allow ourselves to block ourselves with and I think that when we look at this and we realize okay you know say we want to learn a new skill that we have to realize that oh, okay you know if we're going to learn this new skill it's going to take us that 10,000 hour rule if you will and that's a lot of time to commit right but we don't have to do all of that in one year we don't have to do uh, every single hour of that in in one big block is that we can do a little bit at a time and work our way towards reaching that goal of doing whatever it is so let's say for instance you want to do some kind of a vacation 
and this is not a time thing necessarily, but let's say we want to take a vacation to the other side of the world and want to go try someplace, but we know it's going to take, I don't know, $5,000 to make that happen, right? And that $5,000 amount may seem like unsurmountable, but yet if we just start putting, you know, a couple dollars aside every time we get a paycheck, we have some kind of income, then if we commit to that for the long haul, knowing that that money, if we keep adding to it, will eventually add up to that $5,000 amount, then we're guaranteed that we're going to be able to do that thing, right? And the same thing kind of goes with uh, if you want to learn a new skill. Say, we're like, well, like with me and this computer thing that I'm doing. I'm like, you know, if I, if I said I was going to get this done in three months, then that's kind of a unreasonable time frame when I'm looking at the amount of time I have available in a day to commit to it. You know, finally, for me, it's about 20 minutes a day is all I have to commit. But if I spend that 20 minutes a day, at least a few days a week, then I know that if I keep on doing this, that I'm going to eventually have spent enough time to equal out to enough knowledge that I'll be able to to accomplish this thing that I'm trying to do and we have to just remember that that's what it takes and be okay with it and I think a lot of times we're not okay with it and so then we just don't do it at all or we think that oh that's way too long for me to have to wait to be you know in order to do this thing that I really want to do and and so this this is another reason why what Jason was saying kind of leads into this habit number five that and and that is cultivate a burning desire backed by faith. And of course, when when he was talking about you know dis, determining what goal it is that you have by really asking yourself what it is that you want to accomplish, then you can kind of get down into that deeper desire within yourself that will actually push you and motivate you to do that little tiny action consistently over a long period of time that you're like, okay, well I can wait. We just kind of like, you almost have to cultivate patience with yourself or with the situation so that you can actually do that thing. Cause if we're too impatient and we're not willing to wait, then we put it off and never do it at all, which makes no sense. <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but how is putting it off, not doing it at all better than doing it a tiny bit at a time and having a little patience that it actually might happen? I don't, I don't know. That's, uh, that's my thought on that. But uh, uh, Anyone want to share something before we go on to this next uh, habit? I uh, will. Um, on your point where you know, a lot of times, you know, we start something, want something, but then it becomes we tell ourselves in our head it's too hard and then we quit, but you just made a, the right valid point. But if we quit, we never attain that. So therefore, you know, did we really ever want it? You know, and that's what it's got to come down to. You got to really decide, you know, like the old saying, anything worth doing is, you know, is worth doing, you know, and anything worth having, is we're taking time and energy to do it to get there. You know, it's always going to take time and energy to get to that point, you know, and if you quit, you know, because it's taking too long or something, that's part of the other thing is in society now, we have been gearing ourselves for that instant gratification, like right now, and if we don't get it right now, then it's not suitable enough and sometimes there's like real joy and accomplishment um in taking the time and energy to go through it i'll admit i'll take my own case in point when i was going to uh get my degree in accounting i worked my whole way through my mom helped me maybe once my grandmother helped me maybe a couple times but over the whole scheme of things i worked my own way through paid for my own college education. It took me almost 20 years, but I have so much pride and so much, you know, joy and stuff in that I did it, that it was worth the time and energy that I don't just look at it and throw it away. Whereas other people who had mom and dad pay for it or they got 
um, scholarships or took out federal loans or something, um, they have a different sense and view of it because they either didn't really buy it or earn it from the sweat equity of themselves. They used other means. And so therefore, you know, they don't place the same value on it um, as when you put the time energy as like, and you don't get the same rewards, I don't think either. Yeah, you might have that fancy job or position, but half the time, you know, they don't like that, you know, what they're doing anyway. So where's the real sense? I actually enjoy overall what I do, you know, it's right now I'm just not where I want to be. So I'm, that's why I'm continuing forward. Like with my job search to find that right accounting position. But to me, just taking the time and energy that I did just means so much to me that it's, you know, um, I'm really proud of that fact. And so I think, you know, when people just quit, I just kind of, and I've done that too. I've quit on things too. And so I, I see both sides of it. Right on. Congratulations too for uh, going through all that and to, uh, to get your education. That definitely takes commitment and uh, putting other things off and sacrificing, you know, and uh, so, yeah, congratulations with that. Um, uh, you know, it's, to me, it seems like it's all, that's, all, it's all part of the, the process of um, uh, keeping it on, you know, if you, if you spend the time to dig into what it is that you really want and you, you focus on what you want, um, then that brings it to the top of your mind, puts it on the front, your frontal lobe, so to speak. And the more you think about what it is and how you're going to obtain it, um, the more it tells, from what I've under, understood, the more it tells your subconscious that you actually believe you can obtain it. And so it sort of perpetuates itself and grows within you if you, if you put your mental focus to it. You know, if you, if you start thinking of an idea, it's one thing, but if you start visualizing yourself doing it, it's a totally different thing. Um, it allows you, your, your mind to just start coming up with ideas of how you're going to get there, right? And um, I think that that's just a very, a very uh, good point. I like what you were saying, Samantha, about the, small, the smaller steps, you know, don't be afraid to start with those smaller steps because they will become gradually become the bigger, the bigger leaps and bounds that you'll be making. Um, but it's all part of, it's all part of the process. Even the part of learning to learn again, you know, um, that all the, the feelings of being overwhelmed when you first start learning something and there's all that information and then you feel like, Oh, you know, everybody, I, I, I feel like I've always, when I'm learning something new that I, especially if I feel like I should have started a while back, it's like, I feel like, well, I'm so far behind and there's so much to learn and I have to learn all of this stuff. And there's just all of that that you have to, that you think about, but that's part of learning to learn because that comes up every time you, you get back into something. If you start reading something new and then, um, then you, next time you're able to study it is a couple days later you when you pick up that book again it's like okay I, well where was i what did i would start remembering everything that you where you were and you you go through all of those phases once again and so you sort of have to learn to be comfortable with those phases and know that when you come out on the other side you're going to be feeling uh empowered by whatever it is that you're you've chosen to do um, and that's all part of the, that process of of kind of embodying what it is that you are trying to accomplish, I think. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that when you go into this process, um, <clears throat> don't keep it to yourself. Don't be the person who goes into the room, shuts the door, and then just studies and studies and and learns all this stuff, but then outside of, of your room or outside of the classroom, you never tell anybody about it because because um 
like say you're studying to do accounting and you really want to do accounting, but all people ever know about you is that you can do maintenance and do handiwork and do all this other stuff. Well, you're going to keep getting offers to do handiwork and handyman stuff. You're never going to get offers to do accounting because you're not talking about it, telling people you about your journey, saying how I'm learning, I'm learning a plus now. And I've got, you know, I'm, even if you haven't, even if you, even if you don't feel like you're ready for something, let the world decide, let the world decide. If you're telling people you, that you're doing something, then you never know who you might come across that says, Oh, Hey, I know somebody that is a connection. They might give you an internship where you can learn another aspect of this or, you know, so, so, you know, give it life, allow it, you know, talk about it and, um, and, um, you know, just uh, understand that those sort of actions will sort of will open paths for you that you might not have, might ha not see otherwise. Um, and you sort of have to get down the road a little bit in order to see those paths. That makes sense. So. I love it. Love it, guys. Thanks so much. I don't think we're going to have time to talk about any of the other habits in this chapter. We're going to have to make a part three. So that's okay. We'll just do it. <laughs> we haven't decided on the next book anyway, but one thing that came up when, uh, when one of you were talking about, you mentioned, uh, you said something about a book and that reminded me about how easy some, well, okay. Let's just say, for instance, you decide you want to read a book, right? Or, or shoot, for that matter, we, we talk about catching up on a TV show or something, you know? Um, when you think about reading a book, you aren't sitting there thinking, oh, I may never finish it, so I'm just not going to start. You just pick up the book, even though it's like 10,000 pages deep. I just got this book, uh, this one for Andrew Carnegie recently. And it's huge. It's like, how many pages long is this? It's like 830 some page long book, right? But when I picked up the book, I didn't think to myself, oh, this book is way too huge, so I'm just never going to do it. I, I picked up the book thinking, oh, okay, yeah, it's a pretty big book, but, you know, if I just read a little bit here and there over a period of time, I'll get through it, right? And, and I, think that, um, I think the average person who likes to read kind of thinks the same thing. They pick up a, pick up a random book. It could be a, a fiction book. And, you know, they pick it up and they're like, oh, okay, no big deal. You know, I'm just going to read it. And they just spend a few minutes every day or an hour or whatever every day reading the book and eventually they get through the whole thing and, and it's like it's like no big deal or the same thing when when um you know the average person turns on a new tv show like i don't know say game of thrones it's like how many seasons long or whatever like eight seasons or something like that and they're like oh that's no big deal i'll just watch a little bit every day and i'll get caught up right <laughs> you know of course you think a lot of times people end up just binge watching it but um it, What's, it's funny to me that we so easily will commit these amounts of time to something so frivolous as watching Game of Thrones. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the show. I sat and binge watched it while I was knitting, <laughs> you know, back when I was in the camper. And, um, <clears throat> but it's, it's funny to me. I didn't even think twice about the amount of time that I would be committing to watching that silly show to go through seven seasons or six seasons, however many there were at the time. Um, I just did it, right? And, and I feel like we need to do the same thing when we look at a new aspect of our life. We want to try something, experience something, learn something, know something, whatever it is. We just, <clears throat> we should just be like, oh, no big deal. I just start and just keep going and then I'm going to get there, you know? And that's, I don't know why we, have this disconnect with that but um i guess it's just because this whole instant gratification um culture that we live in that we we forget that it's really not that big a deal we just do it you know i don't know <clears throat> what do you guys think that that that's right um um like we can we can just continue to 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 do something and then get it done if we if we like approach it step by step and you're saying like well, why can't we we do these these easy goals or whatever or things that we set for ourselves like like television and stuff <laughs> that that makes it a little complicated that topic but uh, anyway but um 
I was like, that's why I do think you have to have interest because in a way I was thinking I couldn't put together the idea of, oh, do something, do something you love and, and you'll, you'll enjoy yourself, you know, all the time. I think you have to have interest in something because if you don't have interest, then you're not going to come back to, to the subject. You, you're actually, you probably, you might not be interested in it or it might not even be you me before you so like you have you we can't we here's the thing is there's everything coming at us all at once and so we can't learn everything all the time i got i got 200 books on my shelf and i got 20 on the top shelf that are over a thousand pages and so some of those books i'm like I don't think I can do that. I'm thinking the same thing. But that's where I was, I was kind of grateful to this thank you girl, uh, call because we've gone through that thousand page book, you know, and I see how you just do a little bit every day and get there, you know, some books are big, you know, but um, I'm not sure what I was trying to say by that. Just some thoughts. I think that was a, oh, go ahead, Karen, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, as a matter of fact. Um, I hope this isn't t too off track, but I, not seeing the news, I really hadn't paid any attention to the, the wildfires and the mudslides in California. And my son's back home again and he listens to podcasts and so he wanders through the house and I get little snatchets of different things. And, and I was hearing about that. So I looked that up on the, on the computer last night and I was so taken by an article in the LA times where they literally had pictures and <clears throat> kind of um, synopsis of different people's lives who had died in the mudslides. And we're talking just that same day earlier that day or the day before. And, um they had such touching things it was almost like i mean i couldn't even believe i i, <laughs> I glanced with my eyes several times to see that it was the la times that that had put this together but um i think one of the things that i was thinking about is that there was this man who he had um, a place that people really enjoyed being invited to. He had a koi pond, and I don't know why I can't think of the other two things, but all three of them were things that I would have an interest in. And um, he, he would invite people, and they just felt like they were kind of in this magical place, you know, to have these, these things that they could go and see and enjoy. And, and then he would like to do things to completely surprise people uh, with, with some antic. You know, he would just kind of enter some kind of a thing where he knew his friends were going to be. And he would be, there would be just be something about him that would be, you know, everybody would have to laugh. And it was just cool. And I thought, you know, I, I think there's lots of things like that that I would like to accomplish in my life that I would ordinarily just say, you know, <laughs> I guess I'm going to need another lifetime. This isn't going to happen now. But, um, but, but talking about it, because we're talking about this book and because we have different people talking from different perspectives, it makes me realize I should revisit some of that and think about whether or not I would like to even just start something uh, in that vein while I yet live. Thank you. Sorry, I had to answer the door, got a package. Um, I'd maybe like to say something. Yeah, jump out. <laughs> um, um, Hey, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, starting a new a new goal or recommitting yourself at any point in time in your life because we cannot we cannot determine ourselves. We cannot determine what the universe has in store for us. 
we 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 don't know unless we're unless we you know um well it, things won't be revealed to us unless we're looking for it and we won't look for it unless we believe in it so you start with figuring out what it is that you want and then figure out what certain paths you're willing to take is is my suggestion because if you just start off on a path then you're not really you don't really you're not really sure of where it is you want to end up you just know well i want to kind of go on this this path of doing things it seemed to work for other people um but it's you if you don't really have you know exactly where you want to end up and get very clear with what you want to with where your end result wants to needs to be for you um i say start with that start with a very clear idea under an understanding of where it is you want to be down the road with it and then you can you can switch from path to path as you need to as long as you know it's going to take you where you where ultimately it is you want to be um, but i don't think you know we can assume that um, the path is going to take many, many, many years to get us there because you just don't, you just don't know. There may be an opportunity that shows up and it will only show up in, because you've believed and taken a step in one direction or another so that you can see the opportunity. And suddenly that opportunity shortens that time span of you achieving your goal down to weeks instead of years. So, uh, I'm just saying, keep an open mind and, and, you know, never, um, you know, never, um, be afraid of, of recommitting and, and creating a new goal for yourself is really my opinion. What do you guys think? I thought that was one of the best things I've heard on this topic this morning. Thanks, Jason. No, that was really good. I think like redirecting your course and knowing what you're out and out, uh, outcome or end is in sight and then knowing that you may have to change change course or vehicles along the way to get there. Great advice. Thanks everybody for letting me be here this morning. I really enjoy it. It's come at a perfect time. I'm really grateful for this mastermind. You guys have a beautiful week. Bless you. Me too. Thanks so much, Chris. Thanks for being out here. And thanks for having me on today. And it's great to see you all and we'll get through this chapter eventually right but <laughs> i'm loving the journey along with all of you thanks so much have a great day yeah it was a good chapter and loved hearing what everybody had to say look forward to more um and just yeah it was great to be here I, I want to go back to ju for just one moment to something Samantha said about um, cultivating patience. I think one of the benefits of being on this planet for a few more years than others sometimes is that I remember back when, you know, we didn't have phones. You had to walk somewhere to tell somebody something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, you know, I could bring up a million other examples, but patience uh, is it, with everything in, in our generation now, you know, the way technology has gone. I mean, everything is so instant. And I, I kind of feel like I'm excited for the kids on one aspect because what an amazing world to be in, right? They're, they're probably going to have like their own hovercrafts and shit, I'm thinking, right? But um, it, it's, I feel bad for them on the other hand, because how can they have any patience? Like everything is instant. If you think about probably what you learned on the internet yesterday, that's more than some people learned in their whole lives, you know, 50 years ago or something. The, the, rate that we are expanding mentally and <laughs> in, in every way is just uh, enormous. And, and I think that we do have to cultivate patience. And matter of fact, my son and I just had this, uh, this discussion just two days ago because 
his daughter was actually, well, that's a whole nother story, but I was explaining to him, you know, you need to make her understand that life happens and you just don't get things replaced immediately, you know, like a magic spell or something. Um, sometimes it can happen like that, but <laughs> not always. So, uh, so I think being patient with ourselves as well, you know, like I get impatient with myself. I'm my, I'm my hardest critic. There's no doubt about it. Like if I don't think I'm learning something fast enough or what I, I'm, I have a whip, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> like, so, um, and I have to be careful that I'm not that way with other people because that's easy to do as well when you have high expectations of yourself then you can tend to have that on other people which isn't necessarily fair right because they don't have i mean we all have different gifts and abilities and inspirations and and things that are enormously important to me mean absolutely nothing to somebody else you know so how can you really compare anybody to do anything but um I think if we can just realize that life is a journey and we're going to be learning and growing the whole time. So just be patient because <laughs> it's not like you're going to get all your learning done tomorrow and then you're never going to learn anything. Like it's, it's a journey. And uh, just like you just said, we'll get through this chapter eventually, but it's a journey. And, um, and if we can understand that and just not get uptight about it all, then <laughs> we'll, we'll fare better, I think, and just keep moving forward. As you said, Jason, never be afraid to pick up new things, even if you're 104. I mean, what a better time to pick up something new, right? <laughs> so uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you next week. Oh, I love that. I that is such a huge thing, that whole patience thing. And um, you know, I think that we we just get away from we get in this kind of mindset of this instant gratification thing, you know. And and of course, I do look forward to the day where we can just download information into our brain. That'd be awesome. Although I don't know that it'll work the way we hope it will because we won't have all the experience to go along with it. It'll just be like random information, but uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I could be wrong. But um, <clears throat> I wanted to go back to, uh, to Dan. Um, you know, Dan, when you were talking about uh, getting your accounting degree and that it took you 20 years to get everything done so that you could do that. And <clears throat> that's huge because another person who may say, oh, okay, I want to be an accountant, but I, you know, I can't get a good degree done in, a, in the amount of time that I want to do it. And they just don't do it because they're not willing to do it over a longer period of time. That's huge. So huge. And now you have this whole new career path from whatever you were doing before. And I mean, that's just, that's awesome. That's just so awesome. And, and I, I don't know. I mean, I just think it's just wonderful to, to, to open ourselves up to that possibility that we could just take that little bit of time over a, a little bit over a long time. And then suddenly, suddenly <laughs> we're success in that other, that new thing. Right. <clears throat> I was just going to clarify a little bit. When I did this, I started back in 1982 when I got out of high school and I finished and got it in 2001. So it was really like 19 years, but, you know, easier to say 20. But, and all the way through, I was trying to work in, in positions in the accounting area, whether they may not be what most people think of accounting, because I worked in soft count rooms, I worked in hard count rooms, I worked in what was called food and beverage audit, and then I became a like a GL clerk and stuff and things like that. And then other positions, I worked uh, in banks and stuff in you know, in areas that dealt and touched spaces in the accounting area and stuff like that. So all the way through, I was also trying to do stuff within my field related to it to help add to my experience. But um, there were times, in fact, I took like a year, I think a year or a year and a half off. And 
I realized that was not the best thing to do because they put me under a new catalog that added more classes onto my major stuff that I had to take. Had I not had, had I had I kept going, I would have finished even a little sooner, and I would not ever have had to take those extra classes. So that was you know uh, the consequence of not just pushing through. Like my brother, he bull, uh, he bulldozed through and got done in less time than I did, you know, but he worked his way too. And so, you know, but he said he wasn't about to, he was just, and I need, but at that time I was so burned out, I needed to take a little time off. Now I wish I hadn't, but you know, it's that goes in, lies into the decision and choices you make. But even if you make those choices, it's your responsibility to pick up and continue on if that's what your real goal and dream and desire is because for me that was what my I really wanted and so I started back in and finished up and took the extra courses and did it but you know that's the thing you're going to have those things that you know are the additions that come up when you do the little stops, the little breaks, the little things, because then you're going to have to go back and kind of take on more and add more and stuff like that. So those are all things to consider and look into too. Thanks for uh, clarifying that, Dan. And, um, but I still think that, you know, it still is the same concept. I mean, even if, you know, even if you were working in the industry that whole time, you were still going towards a specific goal that you could have given up completely on at any point during that journey and just been like, eh, I guess I'm just going to do this, whatever I'm doing right now and settle for it. Right. Versus continuing on to go get that, that higher level of education so that you can get that higher level of, of position. So guys, we are way past the top of the hour. So, um, I just want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. And for those of you who are watching, we're glad to have you on as well. And uh, there'll be some links below this video if you're watching on YouTube where you can connect with us on our Facebook group. Um, there'll be a link to the, to the previous session, which is part one of this chapter. And then there'll probably be a link once we complete it to the second part of this or third the third part of this discussion when we do our next time. So um, with that, guys, have a great, awesome, amazing weekend. And uh, we'll see you next week. Hopefully everybody will be available. And, uh, and uh, so Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Again, find us over at uh, Facebook if you look for Mindset Mastery Collective. And um, that's it. Have a great afternoon. And we'll see you next week. Bye.